What is up? What is up? What is up, YouTube and Twitch? <laughs> Let's get right into it. Nintendo press conference. <clears throat> App, what are you doing? What are you doing? Nintendo, don't do this to me. What are you doing? There we go. <laughs> All right, so jumping straight into Smash Brothers. Up. Well, I'm pretty sure that's all it can be. <laughs> ah, Nintendo, don't do this to me. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna kick it back a little bit and just let it do this. Ooh. Metal Knight is not playing. <laughs> I haven't played the recent Smash, so I don't know the story about it, but is there a reason why they have this like evil glow on them? Oh, it's the protagonist from uh, Dragon Quest in here? The Luminary. Yes, he is. Alright, I don't know what the heck is going on with this thing, because it's it should be loaded. I don't understand why that's having an issue. It should definitely be loaded. I don't get it. If it does it again, I might have to move over to GameStop. Or GameSpot. Oh, they're adding all the Dragon Quest heroes. All right, this is this is annoying. One second. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move over to Game Spot. Yeah, I think Nintendo's stream thing. <laughs> I think that's where the secondary audio is coming from. <laughs> I don't know why to keep doing that. Streaming issues apparently. Don't know. So you can kind of have like a, what is it called, a turn base in the face while you're fighting. That's, that's kind of exciting. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, um, yeah, I think that the audio is alright. It's, it's not peaking. Well, it kind of is in certain spots. Hopefully, this should fix it. Hello everyone, I'm Yoshiaki Koizumi from Nintendo. 
In this Nintendo Direct for E3 2019, we'll showcase a variety of games, many of them coming soon. But before we dig into the next game, there is someone I'd like to introduce first. <laughs> what? What are you doing here? He just say his name was Nomura? Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. There's been a bit of a mix-up. You're not the right Bowser. Sorry, but I'm the right Bowser for this presentation. Not this way. No, no. This way. This bye does kind of make me miss. Maybe next time. Water. Are you related? No, but we get that a lot. Well, let's get back to it. Like Please a take it away. Uh, Hi everyone, I'm Doug Bowser from Nintendo of America, and I'm thrilled to join you for today's Nintendo Direct. This is our chance to show the world we have games for every type of player on Nintendo Switch. Whether you love action, RPGs, or you're just looking for something new, we've got you covered. Okay, so let's get a look at one of those games by taking a tour of Luigi's Mansion 3. Oh, okay, Luigi's Mansion 3. Luigi's Mansion was a game that grew up with. When I first played it on GameCube way back in the day, I hated it. I did not like it at all. <laughs> but over the years, like I've recently played it again. Luigi's invited to a gorgeous hotel with Mario, Peach, and the others. Oh, lucky him. Oh, my. Luigi's Mansion 3. This hotel is much more than meets the eye, for not long after Luigi arrives, things take a dark turn. We begin our tour by taking in some sights and sounds. You may never leave. You want to leave. The other guests certainly don't plan to move on. They're ghosts, after all, and they're rather aggressive. Simply scare them with the straw bulb, then suck them up. Luigi's new Poltergust G00 has the powerful suction capabilities required and other new features as well. First, the slam. While they have an upgrade ghost, slam it on the ground to inflict some damage. It helps to get other ghosts in on the action. Next, the suction shot. Find the plunger to attach it to something, then pull the string, and you can destroy furniture and more. It's effective against certain ghost types, too. <laughs> Sometimes ghosts may feel inclined to gang up on you. In such situations, a burst yeah, should mommy, the, ghost from the, the powerful uh, air pressure released to blow away ghosts, and it's perfect for when you need a little air. Ah, we simply can't overlook the latest invention from Professor Egad, namely Gooigi. Change between Luigi and Gooigi to use both their skills. Gooigi can do everything from slipping through metal fences to walking on spikes. Indeed, there are obstacles too great for Luigi to handle on his own. And if you pass a Joy-Con controller to a friend, he makes for a great co-op partner. But proceed with caution. Gooigi and water definitely don't mix. Now please direct your attention to the Scare Scraper. Spooky? Sure. Yet it also houses up to eight players for local or online co-op games. Defeat all ghosts before time runs out. Seek and find our dear misplaced toads. And face any challenges the tower throws at you together. place to wake up in a haunted hotel with floor after floor of oddities many traps and mischievous ghosts lurk within what will befall our missing mario and friends and his dear brother luigi their fate rests in your hands 
Luigi's Mansion 3. So this coming out in 2019, just give us a release window at least. Which quarter so that was Luigi's Mansion 3, the latest game in a series that I personally love. And we can look forward to seeing some of the new gameplay elements that await in this strange hotel as we dive deeper into this title on Nintendo Treehouse, live at E3 2019. We'll be streaming content, some you've never seen before, right from the show floor, including live gameplay of Super Mario Maker 2. And on day three, our Treehouse staff will get their hands on some promising indie games that are new to Nintendo Switch. While you watch today's Nintendo Direct, keep an eye out for this icon to learn what other games will appear on Nintendo Treehouse live at E3 2019. You won't want to miss it. Or this. Have a look. I don't know what the Nintendo Treehouse is. I'm assuming it's um like their E3 floor. Ogre slept too long. Hey, what's up, 90s kids? It's been a minute. Ah, How's it going? <laughs> Sing me your story. What has become of I know it looks familiar. Dark, light, brighter than the three suns they I forgot the name of that movie franchise, but I know it's where I know it's from. And brave. Strength and bravery alone will not save Thra. No! Unlock your true potential. Unite as one! Only together can you defeat what is to come. Heroes of Thra. The name will probably come to me at some point. I know, I know what uh, franchise this is. Like. The Dark Crystal. Chibi Zelda. Big fan of the 3D Zeldas. Uh, I tried to raise the volume up a little bit more. Usually I tend to have issues when I try to switch it over to YouTube, the video is being really loud. Hopefully that fixed it. Yeah, I, I personally prefer the um, the 2D aspect Zeldas, not really the 3D ones. I'll take Link to the Past over Ocarina of Time any day. And uh... I knew it was some type of modern game. 
I was about to say it's a secret of mana, but yeah, I knew it was a mana game, the art style. Set destiny in motion with the power of mana. Trials of mana. Early 2020. Any more issues with the audio or anything else? Let me know. I'm looking for a woman with ashen hair. Seen her? Witcher. Witcher. I was hoping you'd come. The only franchise or only anything I've ever heard that use the term ashen. Let's all agree to meet back at the monastery exactly five years from today. Like a class reunion? You will come, won't you? All right, this is definitely an Atlas game. Years ago, we fought here as classmates. As big class reunions go, this one's got to be the worst in history. What should we do, Teach? Kill every last one of them! <laughs> It's, it's funny when it, it's the way they cut to that. Everybody else is calm and stuff, and then you get this one guy. Kill everybody! Still, we have no choice but to eliminate those who cling to unreasonable ideas of justice. Someone must put a stop to the cycle of the strong trampling the weak. The solar fell stop consumes even the darkness itself. Yet we have the strength to scale the walls between us, to reach out our hands in friendship so we can open our true hearts to one another. That's how we win! My teacher. Both sides of time are revealed to you. What shall you do? Uh... How lovely it would be for this moment to last forever. Nintendo Switch, is Nintendo Switch is the only gaming console you can play not only on your TV at home, but anywhere you go. In fact, with a system like this, it might be fun to play Resident Evil at a location like this. They have some type of Resident Evil. I was thinking Nintendo, I think they're supposed to be having some type of a music perfect, park right? or something. Am I wrong? I was assuming they would have like some Resident Evil style location. Or... No lights? No lights. Hey, we're there. Do this. Okay. Resident Evil. Can you open them? Try. See what's through there. There's some random ass couple come out from upstairs. The hell are you kids doing in my house? Did it just eat him? It's gonna come back. Okay, 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 okay. After playing the remake of Resident Evil 2, it seems like Resident Evil 1 had a lot more... 
What's the term I'm looking for? Dangerous enemies? Like bosses and stronger uh, regular enemies and stuff. The game had more threats in it. Playing a Resident Evil game in a place like that might Resident not be Evil my way to play, but to Evil 1. I bet you could find your way to play, don't you think? For now, please take a look. Was today the 4th of July? If not, is the Empire striking back or what? Looks like things are gonna get weird today. Hey, she! What is this about? Get some! As you can see, things got all funky real quick. There's probably some planet-eating type dude waiting for me up ahead. All yoked and powerful and trying to take over the world or something. This game is familiar too. Isn't this the game with that dude with the, the sword that looks like a fluorescent light bulb? Yeah. I forgot his name and I forgot the name of the game. <laughs> but I know what it is. But don't you worry. A hero descends. What? There are no heroes in this world? Oh, but there totally are. My name is Travis Touchdown. I'm the last hero around. Yeah, it's a... Here to save the world. I'm also just a passing assassin. The name I was now thinking of this. for the character was Start Tomorrow for some reason. I knew it was something like that. He had a weird, unique name. What's up, Lou Bomb? Welcome back, Travis. So far, I would say that Tuesday Square Gundam Enix is winning Madness. E3 so far. Mainly because, one, they had my most anticipated game ever. And two, they were mostly gameplay. It wasn't just trailers. This is Kaiser. He led an elite team of Contras during war. Hungry beast! HB is actually a cyborg. I love him so much. I don't really see this how Nintendo can win this. And her like, alien gut bucket. We already know all their biggest stuff coming out. The I don't see them wars. having any type the of gentleman, announcement that would be shocking. The sweetest bug you'll ever meet. You soiled my arm. And Sony's not having a press conference. I'm assuming they might have their uh, end of the year annual PlayStation X event or something that they might use to announce stuff. But as of right now, I got Square Enix at number one. I haven't watched Ubisoft to be fair. I haven't watched Bethesda. And Microsoft's press conference was pretty bland too. Contra! Ten Contra games. Kind of like uh, what's that game called? Enders of Enders of the Zone or something. I forgot it was something like that. Don't give up. Begin the mission. It's your call, rookie. The battle's already started. If you get in our way, we will eliminate you. Or some type of Zeno Gears game. interesting yeah the more I go back and look at the Avengers game the more excited I get about it 
It was just when I first watched it, there was like a distraction. The fact that you look at the characters and they're not like Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Chris Evans and them. <laughs> so it was kind of like a distraction for me. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I'm hoping it's kind of like the Lego, uh, the Lego games, except with modern graphics. So this is a uh, Panzer Dragoon, some type of Panzer Dragoon. What, is it just a remaster? Was it a remake? Seem like they didn't really put a lot of. Konnichiwa. Hello. Like, I'm Shinya Takahashi. Budget from behind Nintendo. that, considering how Earlier this month, big the we held a Pokemon Dragoon Direct games for were. the latest games in the series: Pokemon Sword. If that is a remake, and Pokemon remaster, Shield. <laughs> I think it deserves a The developers more fan from Game Freak showcased the new Gala region, the location of your new adventure, and some new Pokemon you'll encounter there. It will be a while until these games launch. So please stay tuned. By the way, in these games, you can use certain functions of the Pokeball Plus accessory, allowing you to take a Pokemon from one of these games out for a stroll through the real world with you. Yeah, I had a feeling that's what the, when it you said in the trailer. You may not be able to use the device as a game controller, but if you spend some quality time with a favorite Pokemon of yours, then something good might happen. In the Nintendo booth at this year's E3, fans can play Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield for the first time anywhere in the world. In this gameplay demo, you can challenge one of the gyms in the Gala region, the one and only Water Gym, where the water type gym leader Nessa will be there waiting for you. If you're attending this year's show, I encourage you to experience a battle between Dynamax Pokemon which is an advanced strategy from this region. I'm still curious about the move sets. Also, immediately after this Nintendo like Direct, how, how large is the Stay move tuned for live for, uh, gameplay of Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Dynamax Shield Pokemon. on Nintendo Treehouse Live. And now I'd like to shift gears. Please have a look at this. Because if you only have a handful of moves, I don't see people using that too often. I've been waiting for you. As you know, Earth is currently under extra-dimensional attack. Chimeras. Like the ones you've just seen for the first time. At this rate, all of humankind will be pulled into the Chimera's dimension. We're facing down the end of the world. Through blood, sweat, and years of research, we finally made it. Yeah. I want the, the game to be open world and I wanted to have some um by neurologically syncing some structural environments with human operators. Like if, like we I said, if I play with Hulk control, and I go in the middle of a city and, and I do a giant Hulk clap, I want I'm windows to be shattered. Of course. <laughs> That's my dream game right there. Or dream superhero game. I'll give you some parting advice. Your power. It's not the blessing you think it is. When a Legionis and a Legion are perfectly synchronized, it's like they're two parts of one body. No use! The override release isn't going through! That's impossible! And when half of that body is about to die, the Legion's survival instincts kick in to save it. No way! There's no way! What good could this possibly be? It's a long shot, but it's the only shot we have! It's all up to you, my friend. A blessing from the Legion. Or maybe I should say, a curse. We can't, can't turn, turn back, back now. now. I've, I've got to know the whole truth. truth. He's, He's still, still alive, alive out there. there. I know he is. is. Astral Shane.
<laughs> Isn't that how most games at E3 work? <laughs> it looks interesting. I don't know if I'll buy it, but it looks it looks like something. stone at my command, this may not be a battle we can win. Whatever's happening, we can beat it. Keep fighting! This is reminding me of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Jump in any time now, darlings. They will pay for what they've done. In blood. All hope is fleeting in the face of Thanos. Yeah, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I can't explain just how well Marvel did their movies and their franchises and stuff. Like, before the uh, Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe, how many people knew about the Guardians of the Galaxy and all these other characters that, unless you were diehard Marvel fans, you would know nothing about? They, like, marketed their least popular characters and made them household names. So now, like, their whole entire back catalog of characters can make a movie and it'll be successful. On YouTube, in order to monetize your videos, you have to have 1,000 subscribers, and I believe you have to have about 4,000 minutes worth of view time in a year, I think. I don't know if it's 4,000 minutes or 4,000 hours. But you can have at least 4,000 of one of those <laughs> combined for, uh, throughout a year. You can change the graphics to 16 bits. Oh, they're going to go all out for so, Tokyo what do you think so far? Now for some follow-up information on a game that fans have been waiting for. Please take a look. Attention, please. The Nook Inc. getaway package charter flight will soon be arriving at the deserted island. I just like how Marvel was able to um, take their characters and the ones that people didn't really know about and just like just blow them up to the stratosphere. Because I can tell you right now, Iron Man was not on the level of Spider Man. At least. I thought Spider-Man was the number one without a doubt. Now they switched it and made Iron Man the, like, the biggest power ranking move <laughs> in movie history. Iron Man jumped from like maybe 10th place all the way to number one. Right, this is obviously an animal. 
was never really able to get into Animal Crossing too much. Tell me where Guardians of the Galaxy ranked on that uh, Originally, list of superheroes before the, the movie universe. <laughs> However, we need to change its release date to March 20th of 2020. To ensure that the game is the best it can be, we must ask you to wait a little longer than we thought. That first quarter of we 2020 is going to be latest installment crazy. Of Animal Crossing. On Nintendo Treehouse Live, the game's producer, Mr. Nogami, and the director, Ms. Kyogoku, will come on for a live demonstration of some early moments in the game, so please stick around until it starts. This is going to, without a doubt, be the best many different types of games first quarter of a year for gaming and our partners. in video game history. I've so, never... We prepared a highlight reel to usually that's like the downtime for games. And beyond. Let's have a look. Pyro! No clue. Let's get this done that and make it, um, uh, Minecraft 2. Dragon Quest Builders 2 guys are going to be I'd like to see a new Destroy All Humans. Like, I played the first one, I never played the second one, but the first one was fun. Also, another game that came out around the time the first one came out was, uh, I forgot the exact name of it, it was a zombie game. You play as a zombie and, like, you can, uh, fight people and turn them into zombies and have, like, an army of zombies with you. What was it called again? You play like you look like a salary man, but you were a zombie. I forgot what it was called. Damn. It'll probably come to me at some point. Why the hell are they chilling with each other? Something's going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong. I mean, what, what more can you expect from the ultimate troll? There we go. Banjo Kazoo is ready to fight. Damn. 
sure the bird likes that. Got himself back in shape just in time for combat. Mm. It's confirmed. I just feel really like pancakes. <laughs> that that obviously cool. wasn't Duck Hunt silhouette, was it? Please stay tuned for more information about DLC in the future. As for Nintendo Switch, we have more yeah. games in development beyond you don't really see what we've those shown style you to games too much anymore. I'm looking forward to the day we can introduce them to you. Yeah, everything's kind of changed. Speaking of those days when you would direct, have one level, I actually have with one like more thing to show you. different uh, completion Thank goals. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. With like a hub world and stuff like that. The Super Mario 64 model. Uh, backwards talking. This is like a Breath of the Wild DLC. That's not Nintendo friendly. The sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is now in development. Alright, so it doesn't sound like that's a brand new Zelda game. It sounds like that's a brand new, like they're turning Breath of the Wild into a franchise. So there's going to be a Breath of the Wild 2. So not necessarily the next game. Hey, Zelda good morning, line, everybody, and welcome to E3 2019. To like Final 10 I'm Doug Bowser from Nintendo of America, and he 11, is 12, Bill Trinan from Nintendo Treehouse. What is up, We're Johnny? Here, the Nintendo booth. We're going to spend a couple minutes talking about what we just saw That's in the right. Nintendo Direct. That's right, work. And... We're going to give you a sneak peek of the booth. So, Bill, I don't know about you, but I think there's a lot of folks out there that are pretty excited about what they just saw. Well, Doug, I think it goes without question yeah, that I, chip. myself, I am no a huge fan no of the Legend of Zelda series. Uh, like a lot of people, I put a lot of time into the Breath of the Wild. So, <laughs> personally, I am incredibly excited that we're not getting new DLC. We are getting a full sequel, a brand new game, in development for Nintendo Switch. Um, so hope, yeah. I mean, hopefully I everyone out there is excited DLC as well. For a game um, certainly if you're a Zelda sequel. fan, there was a lot to like in this sequel. Nintendo Direct. A lot of other things as well. Uh, uh, lots of games for lots of players, from Dragon Quest XI-S to even things like Panzer Dragoon, uh, the Dark Crystal, Astral Chain looking great. Was there anything in the Direct that stood out to you? For me personally, I'm looking forward to Luigi's Mansion 3. I'm a huge fan of the series. And I look forward to being able to be walk this through this, the various levels of this see. spooky hotel with my sidekick, Gooigi. And the thing I'm actually really looking <laughs> forward to is the new Poltergust and its that updated uh, yes. capabilities, including the slam move. It's going to be a lot of fun killing, killing ghosts with yeah, killing ghosts sure with ghosts. Sure That's right. And it feels really good, too. Yeah, I, I'm feeling be. this game's going to uh, suck up a little bit of my time. You just did that. That was a dead joke. 
You know, one other thing I'm really excited about is uh, is what we got on the floor here, and that is uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. That's right. I think this year is probably the most space we've ever dedicated in our booth. <laughs> well, the stream's to a pretty much game. over at this point. Uh, the booth looks fantastic. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and take give you a quick sneak peek. Of I will that. have a special. Um, it's um, themed on the I'll water gym, some type of and what we've done is we have Not recreated event, but, um, the gym leader battle arena. So everybody here at E3 is gonna going to get a chance to play I'll Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield in the environment of the Gym Leader Battle Arena, and I think that's going to be really great for them. But we have something special for everybody watching live. Uh, our very first segment on Nintendo Treehouse Live this year at E3 is going to be Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, and we're going to give people a that's look right. at a much bigger shield. part uh, of that game. Um, and I think be with you. that the team is almost ready, so I'm going to head over there in just a second. And I'm we're gonna not get sure. This was, a, this was a uh, short so, uh, so great. Thank you, everybody, for watching, conference. and stay tuned for some Treehouse Live coming up right yeah, away. This is a, Thanks, this is everyone, a short for viewing. This is the Make sure you one tune they in next for all Treehouse all the, Live, and tune in for the, the next showed, three days of Treehouse Live. We'll have discussions with developers about the games that they're building. We'll give you some sneak peeks at some first play, and we really look forward to giving you a chance to see everything that we have to offer at uh, E3 this year. Thank you very much. You're good. I'll be streaming again tomorrow. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Nintendo Treehouse Live 2019. My name is Teresa, and we're here to kick off to the first view of the live. All right, so. All right, well, I am done with this for now, so. Huh. That was the Nintendo press conference, or at least the Nintendo Direct for E3 2019. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming through. And chilling with me while we go ahead and watch and enjoy this press conference. Like I said, this was the shortest one out of all of them. So I don't know exactly how, how you could rank it. Because the other ones had more time. It gets more stuff out. Um, more presentation because there were press conferences and things like that. So if I had to rank this year's E3, I would say Square Enix is the clear winner. Um, who would I put second? I would probably put I probably put Nintendo second considering the fact that this uh, press conference was only about 45 minutes I would say Nintendo probably uh, had a lot more stuff considering how short their press conference was and they had a lot more gameplay it wasn't just cinematic trailers and things like that so I think that Nintendo will be second in my opinion um, and then third would probably be, well, I, I don't know. I didn't watch the Bethesda or Ubisoft, so I can't really rank them. But out of the ones I saw, third would be Microsoft. So those are my three, um, I guess, press conferences for E3 in order. Square Enix, without a doubt, is the winner, though. <laughs> Square came out with Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's all that matters. But yeah, most of the stuff they had was a lot of uh, gameplay. If you have gameplay at your press conference, you win. I don't want to see cutscenes. I don't want to see CGI. I don't want to see cinematic anything. I want to see gameplay. I learned my lesson from the 2005 E3 or Sony uh, press conference. I want to see gameplay. I don't give a damn about cutscenes. You can make a game look as pretty as you want it to look with as amazing of animations as you want them to be and all that and then the game comes out and it looks like shit I don't give a damn I want to see some actual 100% bona fide gameplay god damn it but yeah anyway um, they said it's going to be episodic they said the content is two blu-ray discs worth of content now I don't know if that means that the game is going to be separated into two games and that's it or if they mean like a blu-ray disc holds whatever like 60 gigabytes so it'll be 120 gigabytes worth of content that doesn't mean they're going to be on one disc or on two discs maybe they'll take 20 gigabytes for one game 20 gigabytes for the second game 20 for the third until they have a total of 120 but um yeah i'm just going to assume it's coming out on two disc at least i hope they did say that the first game was going to be midgar I don't know if they just mean it's going to include Midgar and have other stuff or if it's just going to be exclusively Midgar. But yeah, based on what they said, based on what they make it sound like, they make it sound like the they added a lot more to Midgar. Like it's not just the stuff that we saw in the original Final Fantasy 7. It's it's going to be 
a lot bigger than that. But uh, yeah, so far I'm impressed with the fact that they were able to bring in Dragon Quest characters into Super uh, Smash. Um, I, I personally like the little Zelda game they did, the little uh, chibi looking Zelda game. Like I said, those are the types of games I like more than the 3D Zeldas. I will take Link to the Past over Ocarina of Time every single day of the week. Um, let me see, what else? Well, they, they had a lot to show in this uh, press conference. I have to actually go back <laughs> and look at all the games that they showed because they showed a lot of games. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> 2005, you were two. 2005 I was that was the first E3 that I actually sat down and watched the entire thing of my first E3 experience was 2005 because PlayStation 3 was so hyped at the time but uh, anyway I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up so I want to thank you guys for coming through again um, if you like this video make sure you go ahead and hit the follow button uh, if you enjoy my streams make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button like I said I will be streaming a lot more frequently I have a stream scheduled for tomorrow where I'll be continuing the Phoenix Wright games. Um, and I will be streaming on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on all of my future uh, things. I have a weekly uh, schedule on my Twitter page. You should be able to see it if you scroll down. And that'll probably be updated every week so you'll know what my weekly schedule will be. If something does change, I will post it on Twitter if you want to know where, you, where to find me on social medias. Besides Twitch, of course, because that's where you're at right now. <laughs> I'm on Instagram and Twitter right here. And you can find me on YouTube, Devon Da Vinci. Um, and that's where I will be uploading all this stuff. Matter of fact, this will be archived there. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you like this, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you guys on my future videos. So until then, I'm Devon Da Vinci, and I'm signing out. And hopefully you've just been a little more enlightened to the greatness that is E3. Deuces.